Congressman Paul. Hold on. <clears throat> Congressman Paul, South Carolina has seven major military bases and thousands of people employed in the defense industry. But you want to make major cuts in defense spending, several hundred billion dollars in the coming years that inevitably would cost South Carolina jobs. What do you say to people in this state who worry that your military plans would hurt the national security and cost South Carolina jobs? I, I would say your, suggest, your, your questions suggest you're very confused about my position. <laughs> I want to cut money, overseas money. That's what I want to do. I want to cut military money. I don't want to cut defense money. I want to bring the troops home. I'd probably have more bases here at home. We were closing them down in the 1990s and building them overseas. That's how we got into trouble. So we would save a lot more money and have a stronger national defense, and that's what we should do. But to say that we would be weaker is absolutely wrong. Because, and, and, and another important thing you should consider is the fact that uh, the military is behind me more than the others. I get twice as much money from the, from the active military duties than all the other candidates put together. So they're saying that I'm on the right track. They're sick and tired of those wars. They're sick and tired of the nation building and the policing activity. But to say that we would have less money for defense, we actually have more money. And if I may, I'd like to go back to the international uh, financial right. thing. So, Congressman, just to be clear, your plan calls for freezing defense spending at 2006 levels, which is well no, below see, where we are today. I, I, you still don't understand. Uh, What's he missing, Congressman? You don't understand there's a difference between military spending and defense spending. Just because you spend, spend a billion dollars on an embassy in Baghdad, bigger than the, than the Vatican, you consider that defense spending. I consider that waste. So, now, if you want to... A little while ago, we were talking about, you know, funding the unemployed. Of course, that should be privatized, and I don't support it. But I don't support cutting that off like that. I'd cut some of this military spending. Like Eisenhower advised this. Watch out for the military-industrial complex. Defend this country. We have to have a strong national defense, but we don't get strength by diluting ourselves in uh, 900 bases, 130 countries. That is where the problem is. But you need to understand that there's a difference between just military spending and defense spending. Okay. Just to spend money. We understand this domestically. If you spend more money domestically, we know it's wrong, but we're supposed to spend more money and that's conservative. I've never quite understood this. We're supposed to be conservative, spend less money. I'd like to... I'd like to ask a question about keep, keeping money for all of the candidates down the line. What is the highest federal income tax any American should have to pay? We're looking for a number. Congressman Paul. Well, we, we should have the lowest tax that we've ever had, and up until 1913, it was 0%. What's so bad about that? Now, now I would like to follow up on that because I think the question on taxes is generally misleading. Because any time you spend money, it's a tax. You might tax, you might borrow, you might inflate. The vicious tax is attacking the American people, the retired people today, is the inflation tax. The devaluation of the currency, the standard of living is going down, and you need to address that. And that's so, why I want to make the inflation tax zero as well. So your answer is zero? Zero. Okay, about taxes, uh, Kelly? Congressman Paul. An analysis by the Prison Policy Initiative finds that blacks who are jailed at four times the rates of whites in South Carolina are most often convicted on drug offenses. Do you see racial disparities in drug-related arrests and convictions as a problem? And if so, how would you fix it? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, definitely. There is a disparity. It's not that it's my opinion. It's, it's very clear. Uh, blacks and minorities who are involved with drugs are arrested disproportionately. Uh, they're tried. They're in prison disproportionately. Uh, they suffer the consequence of the death penalty disproportionately. Rich white people don't get the death penalty very often. 
And uh, most of these are victimless crimes. Sometimes people can use drugs and arrest it three times and never committed a violent act, and they can go to prison for life. And yet we see times, just recently we heard, where uh, actually murderers get out of prison in shorter periods of time. So I think it's way, way disproportionate. I don't think we can do a whole lot about it. I think there's discrimination in the system, but you have to address the drug war. You know, the drug war is, is very violent on our borders. We have the immigration problem, and I'm all for having, uh, you, you know, tight immigration policies, but we can't ignore the border without looking at the drug war. In the last five years, 47,500 people died in the drug war down there. This is a major thing going on, and it unfairly hits the minority. This is one thing I am quite sure that uh, Martin Luther King would be in agreement with me on this. Matter of fact, Martin Luther King would be in agreement with me on the wars as well, because he was a strong uh, opponent to the Vietnam War. So I, I, uh, I would say yes, this judicial system is probably one of the worst places where, uh, 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 where, where prejudice and, and discrimination still exists in this country. You said you were against the operation that killed Osama bin Laden. You said the U.S. operation that took out the terrorists responsible for killing 3,000 people on American soil, quote, showed no respect for the rule of law, international law. So to be clear, you believe international law should have constrained us from tracking down and killing the man responsible for the most brazen attack on the U.S. since Pearl Harbor. Obviously no, and that's what I did not say that. What I, matter of fact, uh, after 9-11, I voted for the authority to go after him. And uh, my, my frustration was that uh, we didn't go after him. It took us 10 years. We had him trapped at Tora Bora, and I thought we should have trapped him there. I even introduced another resolution on uh, the principle of market reprisal to keep our eye on the target rather than getting involved in nation building. But, but the, you, you know, re re no respect for international law was the question about the quote that you used in Des Moines. Well, you know, uh, KSM, uh, his colleague, was, uh, was in, in uh, Pakistan, and we communicated, you know, with the uh, government of Pakistan, and they turned him over. And uh, what, we, what I suggested there was that if we have no respect for the sovereignty of another nation, that it will lead to disruption of that nation. Here we have a nation that we're bombing constantly, trying to kill people that we consider our enemies. At the same time, we're giving the government of Pakistan billions of dollars. Now there's a civil war going on. The people are mad at us, but yet the government is they're getting money from us. And I think it's a deeply flawed policy. And But to not go after him, uh, and if, if I voted for the authority, obviously I think it was proper. I, I, but once they waited 10 years, uh, I don't see any reason why they, they couldn't have uh, done it like they did after Khaliga Sheikh Haman it. And that, uh, that would have been a more proper way. Now, if, if somebody has a, somebody in this country, say a Chinese dissident comes over here, we wouldn't endorse the idea, well, they can come over here and bomb us and do whatever. I'm just trying to suggest that respect for other nations' sovereignty and look at the chaos in Pakistan sure. now. We're at war in Pakistan. But to say that I didn't want him killed and no, didn't vote for the authority, I, I just quoted from I'm your just radio. Suggesting, I'm just suggesting that there are processes that if you can follow on the you should do it. There's proper procedures rather than digging bigger holes for ourselves. That's what we have been doing in the Middle East, digging bigger and bigger holes for ourselves. And it's so hard for us to get ourselves out of that mess. Right. We're, and we have a long way to go. We are still in Iraq and that's getting worse. And we're not leaving Afghanistan and the American people People are sick and tired of it. Eighty percent of the American people want us out of there. I'm just suggesting that we work within the rule of law. Like only going to war when you declare the war, then we in wouldn't be inter in international law. I understand. Well, I guess U.S. intelligence officials say they had documents recovered in that compound in Abbottabad that showed that Al Qaeda was planning other attacks, perhaps bigger than 9/11. I asked you in our debate in Sioux City on the topic of Iran about this, but on this topic. GOP nominee Ron Paul would be running far to the left of President Obama on the issue of tracking down and killing terrorists who want to attack the U.S. Well, I, w I would say that uh, if, if you do your best and you can't do anything, yes, we had the authority, we voted for it, you got it from the Congress, you do it. I just didn't think that they had gone through the process enough 
to actually, you know, capture him in a different way. I mean, think about Saddam Hussein. You know, we did that. We, we captured him. And we tried him. I mean, the government tried him and he hung, got hung. What's, what's so terrible about this? This whole idea that you can't capture, just a minute, right? Just a minute. What's this whole idea that you can't capture people? Uh, just but you think voted of, against the war in Iraq. Just, just think, Adolf Eichmann was captured. He was given a trial. What's wrong with capturing people? Why didn't we try to get some information from him? You know, we're, we're accustomed to asking people questions, but all of a sudden, gone, you know, uh, th that's it. So I would say that uh, there are different ways without trying to turn around and say, oh, for some reason, this doesn't mean he's supporting, supporting okay. America. Or Speaker something Gingrich, like that. If, if you were... Andrew Jackson had a pretty clear-cut idea about America's enemies. Killed them. <laughs> Congressman Paul, 30 seconds, please. 30 seconds to respond, since you were mentioned. My, my point is is if another country does to us what we do others, we're not going to like it very much. So I would say that maybe we ought to consider a golden rule in, uh, in foreign policy. Don't do to other nations what we don't want to have them do to us. So we, we, endlessly bomb, we endlessly bomb these countries and then we wonder, wonder why they get upset with us. And, uh, and, and yet it's, it continues on and on. I mean, uh, this, uh, I, this idea, That's time. this idea that we can't debate foreign policy, then all we have to do is start another war. I mean, it's it's war mongering. They're building up for another war against Iran, and people can't wait to get in another war. This country doesn't need another war. We need to quit the ones we're in. We need to save the money and bring our troops home. Governor Romney. Yes, sir. Congressman Paul. Uh, just, just a very brief statement. Uh, I, too, served in the Air Force for five years during the height of the Cold War from 62 to 68. So I've had a little bit of experience. Matter of fact, I was over in, uh, in the Afghanistan-Pakistan region. But I would like to point out one thing about the Taliban. The t Taliban used to be our allies when we were fighting the Russians. So the Taliban are people who want – their main goal is to keep foreigners off their land. It's the Al-Qaeda. You can't mix the two. The Al-Qaeda want to come here to kill us. But Taliban just says, we don't want foreigners. We need to understand that, or we can't resolve this problem in the Middle East. We're going to spend a lot of lives and a lot of money for a long time to come. Kelly Evans. Governor Romney, when President Obama signed the National Defense Authorization Act into law, he enacted a provision allowing him to indefinitely detain American citizens in U.S. military custody. Many, including Congressman Paul, have called this unconstitutional. At the same time, the bill did provide money to continue funding U.S. troops. Governor Romney, as president, would you have signed the National Defense Act as written? Yes, I would have, and I do believe that it's appropriate. Congressman Paul, a different question. Your plan to... Why can't I, have a Why can't I ask you about that one? <laughs> You were included in the, in the question in the first place. Do you want 30 seconds to respond yeah, to this? I, I, I need a minute. Uh, <laughs> no, I think, I think we're going in the wrong direction for the protections of our liberties here at home. They're under th deep threat. The Patriot Act has eliminated the Fourth Amendment. We now have a policy of preemptive war. You don't have to declare war, and you don't even have to have an enemy. We can start the wars. That's what preemptive war is all about. Now, with the uh, Military Appropriation Defense Act, this, this, is, this is major. This says that the military can arrest an American citizen for under suspicion and he can be held indefinitely without habeas corpus and denied a lawyer indefinitely even in a prison here. Let me give you one statistic. You're worrying about all these, all, all these where we're going to try people, where are they going to do We have to do it secretly because our rule of law is so flawed. We have arrested 362 people related to al-Qaeda top operation. 260 of them are in prison. They've been tried and convicted. So don't give up on our American judicial system so easily, I beg of you. Kill.